nope didn't need a bump fire stock didn't use a stock at all on this one uh, and it's not a machine gun either but what this thing is is a nfa registered short barrel rifle uh, and i have a form one here to prove it so uh what that means for you guys who uh, don't know a whole lot about guns is that I paid an additional unconstitutional tax as well as uh, underwent a, an intrusive 10 month unconstitutional background check to uh, acquire this firearm. However, with the current legislation that is being proposed in Congress right now, I would be considered a felon for the action that I just performed because I had this evil rate enhancing device here sounds kind of silly doesn't it it's not a joke that's exactly what the law that is currently produced or currently being proposed in congress would state my good buddy tim over at the military arms channel did an excellent video on this specific topic earlier this morning you should hop over there and watch that video i'll have it linked in the description box below only after you finish this one though uh, because we're going to hop into this gun and see why this bill is so dangerous. Even though I've gone through all the trouble and all the regulations to get this gun, I could still be considered a felon, and you could too, just simply by owning this gun, as well as something like this. So the Trader Shitbird bill, I mean, the Corbello Molten bill, is the most recent push for gun control in Congress to uh, basically use the tragedy that befell our nation in Las Vegas just a week ago uh, as a political platform to push for more gun control. So what on this thing could be construed to be a rate enhancing device? Well, first off, let's just look at this thing. It's really light. I mean, this is a light gun and light guns are easier to bump fire. You saw that little stunt I pulled with this little rate enhancing device just a few minutes ago. Could be talking about weight limits on guns. So a gun has to weigh a certain amount so that it's harder to bump fire or something silly like that. This thing has a red dot on it. It's faster to acquire targets because it's got a, a you know single point of aim. Could be looking at stuff like that that could turn a firearm into a rate enhancing device because guys, this isn't defined. On the front of this gun, we have a blast can. What is a blast can? A blast can is, uh, among other things, is a device that goes on the end of the gun, increases the back pressure on the gas system so that the short guns operate more smoothly. Operating more smoothly as in increased carrier speed, operating faster, faster, faster. Faster. Yeah, under that bill, muzzle devices that increase the speed at which the guts operate. Yeah, definitely a rate enhancing device. Well, what do we got back here? That is a Geisley Tricon trigger. And if we get our handy dandy trigger meter here, this trigger weighs in at three pounds, six ounces, which is considerably less than the standard uh, weight of a mil spec trigger, about seven, eight pounds, something like that. So. Does the trigger have to have certain travel dimensions, certain weight, all that sort of stuff? That's a rate enhancing device because it allows you to operate the trigger faster, maybe bump fire it faster, stuff like that. So um, that's clearly a rate enhancing device. This thing has a shoulder thingy that folds sideways. That's just evil. It's probably enhances the fire rate somehow on that thing, right? What is that? I don't know what that is, but it just looks evil, right? What do we have here? We have two springs. Why on earth would you need two springs? It's got to make the thing operate faster, more smoothly, operate properly, all that sort of stuff. That's a rate enhancing device, definitely. But if we dig even further, sweet mother, a reduced carrier, half the size of a standard carrier. That's got to make the thing run faster, right? So that definitely a rate enhancing device. Now guys, I'm kind of joking a little bit about this sort of stuff, but I'm not joking at the same time. You have to remember that the, the knowledge base of these people is not very high, and the ones that do understand it know exactly what they're doing. Regulations aren't going to do it. We need a law. It can't be changed by another president. What do you make of the increased sales of bump fire stocks in the wake of the shooting and then yeah. now legislation? See, I don't know what to make of it. Um, 
what this event said, uh, th this is a well-to-do man. He wasn't mentally ill. Um, he wasn't a criminal. He wasn't a juvenile. He wasn't a gangbanger. And he was able to buy 40 weapons over a period of time, have 12 bump stocks, line them up, break through two windows in his hotel suite. Could there have been any law passed that would have stopped him? No. Um, he, he passed uh, background checks registering for handguns and other weapons uh, on multiple occasions. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an out right ban, picking up every one of them, M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. I could not do that. The votes weren't here. There's a reason that they used rate enhancing device instead of naming bump, bump stocks specifically. So you have to understand they are after your guns. This is the worst piece of gun control legislation that has come to pass in our lifetime. Just a month ago, we were talking about passing national concealed carry reciprocity. We were talking about trying to get silencers off of the NFA registry. Guys, we sat on our hands. That opportunity, for all intents and purposes right now, is gone. We just waited too long. I've been harping for months about getting off your butt, being politically active, and I understand not a whole lot of you like the, pol the political aspect of firearms, but you have to understand that the issues surrounding firearms and firearms ownership are inherently a political -ish set of issues. So if you're not politically active, you're part of the problem. Now, the good news is, even though the tables have been turned and now we're talking about fighting for the very essence of our rights, there's still time. There's time to be active, but the window for you to act is measured in hours. So you need to get in touch with your representatives, Get in touch with your senators. I will have links in the description down below where you can go and find all the information for your people. It's not good enough to send an email anymore, guys. You need to pick up that phone, call them, write them. I'm talking ink and stamp, right? I sent an, a letter out this morning. You have to get on this thing because we have a very, very short window of time to pull public opinion on this thing and make them understand that public opinion is in the tank for this kind of action and that if they don't support what we want, they're going with it.